Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Just a quick one to let you know that I have a brand new Patreon page. Come and support this channel and get your hands on dozens of procedural materials. Just a quick reminder before we get started that this is for Blender version 4. If you need to work with Blender version 3 because of your computer specs or whatever, then please do check back for the, uh, through the playlist for the previous version of this frosted glass tutorial. Okay, that done. For those that are interested, this is my scene setup. I've got a plane that I've turned into basically a psych. I've got an area light coming down the back of that. I've got three lights constrained to an empty which are kind of put towards the front edge of the object that I'm going to be shading which is the icosphere and then of course I have the camera in the front. So let's switch over to the shading view and actually what I'm going to do is move that object into the center and also the empty and you can see what happens with the lights there they follow that empty because they're constrained to it. So let's keep that fairly central. Anyway, back to the icosphere. Of course, I am using the Cycles render engine. If you are using any other render engine, such as Eevee, I can't guarantee this will work for you. Now, for the render settings, I've got 0 0.02 as my noise threshold, a maximum sample of 512, and I'm denoising using the Open Image Denoiser. For the light paths, I've basically gone for a default setup. So that's this here. Again, any other variation to this, and I can't guarantee this will come out the same. So just play around and find your settings. So I'm going to click on New Material. Now it's shoved it all the way over here, so I'm going to press A and then the period key on my number pad, and that will bring everything into focus here. Now a lot of the work will be done by this principal shader, which has changed a bit since version 3, so we'll take a look at that. Now I do need to enable viewport shading in here so we can see better what's going on. There we go. Uh, and what I'm going to do is give the transmission a value of 1. That's going to make it see-through, basically. Which I think I need to change the background colour of the floor. There we go. So let's go back to the main object. Uh, now, we can give it a colour, but the colour is actually going to serve a purpose in this case, so I will come back to that. We don't need any metallic value here. We're going to drop the roughness down to 0.25. We'll leave the index of refraction at 1.45. That's around what glass would be. It's kind of around there so you can sort of play around with that if you want a different look oh I've got a smiley face uh, there and that's the main settings further down obviously we've put the transmission up to one the coat sheen and emission I don't think actually we'll add a tiny bit of coat to it 0.185 with a roughness of 0.75 it's just going to give us that little bit extra. Uh, don't need any sheen. For the specular, I'm going to change the distribution to GGX. And leave everything set as it is. And I'll just collapse all of those. And, oh, excuse my phone. What I need to do is basically apply a... Shush. I need to apply a color ramp to this with a hue and saturation um, node. So I can do one of two things. I can press Shift A as we did before and either find it in the uh, menus, color ramp, or I can click on search and type and search for it. But we can now drag a, a line from an input or an output and we get this little plus symbol. And when we release our mouse button, we get the search box automatically. So sorry for my phone going off all over the place. So, there we go, colour ramp. Now I'm going to set this first value to 0.8. Actually, no, 0.5. 
so it's kind of way up on the the value range there and leave that at white and everything else the same there then I'm going to search for a hue saturation value node drop it in here and drop the saturation down to 0.5 these might not seem to have done a lot but if I disconnect them you will see a slight in fact actually no if I change this factor value you'll see a very slight difference as I slide through that scale and basically what this is doing is just dumbing down the scattering in the middle a bit and giving that sort of realistic frosted glass look and that believe it or not is your entire node setup for frosted glass now let's render this out very quickly so you can see uh, a finished result. And there you have frosted glass. Now admittedly this is for an entirely smooth orb. Obviously you can apply it to different shapes. So in fact actually if I shade flat you can see that there's faceting going on there. And if I disable this subdivision modifier you'll be able to see on there that you get obviously the faceting going on so you'll get a different look depending on what you're putting it um, depending on your model and then if I put something beside it or behind it even uh, let's put a cylinder behind it you'll see that that also plays with the light or the, the refraction within the glass uh, let's just quickly apply some kind of color to that so you can see lots of things to do and play with when it comes to this particular shader anyway i hope you have enjoyed that and will put it to use in your own projects of course before you go please do remember to like and subscribe and if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below the video and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, thanks for watching.